Hello and welcome. My name is Andy Hodgins. I'm a director with Dell Technologies North America B2B Field Marketing. I'm pleased to be joined today by Andrew Hewitt, who is a senior analyst with Forrester Research. In his role, Andrew serves infrastructure and operations professionals through research focusing on improving the technology and work experience of work from anywhere and hybrid workforces. Andrew, welcome again, and thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here, Andy. I'm really excited to walk through this research that we've been doing jointly together for the past six months or so. So Andrew, to jump right in, after the turmoil and change of the last three years, we know that companies are collectively moving towards a new future of work. This is a model that includes increased hybrid work and a more dispersed data perimeter. Within this context, as you're aware, in August of 2022, Dell commissioned Forrester Research to evaluate key trends in how companies are evolving their device refresh strategies. Can you tell us a little bit more about the parameters of this study? What did it look like? Who did you survey? And what ultimately were the goals? Absolutely. So we knew coming out of the pandemic that the way that people were thinking about device refresh had fundamentally changed. You know, prior to the pandemic, I had clients saying, you know, our device strategy really isn't a strategic priority for us. But after the pandemic, it absolutely is. It's one of the number one things that we're using to drive um, a better experience in hybrid work, you know, increased, um, you know, agility, innovation, et cetera. And so we really wanted to go out and test with uh, an actual survey, um, you know, to understand what were those changing perceptions around device refresh? And did it make sense to actually embrace an accelerated refresh? Um, and what were the benefits of embracing that accelerated refresh? So I'm pleased to say that this, um, this overall study was, was fairly well-rounded in terms of how we approached it. There was a quantitative component of this. We talked to 416 um, you know, survey respondents um, across a variety of different industries. These were leaders in IT, operations, and finance. They had to be director level and above um, at enterprises that were small, you know, a couple hundred million in revenue, all the way up to multiple billions in revenue, and respondents coming in from six different countries. So we had a really wide representation of different viewpoints on device, device refresh, which really gave us a nice sample size to dig into some of the analysis. But we didn't want to stop just with the survey. We also wanted to layer in some qualitative insights Oftentimes you can really uncover the use cases and the different benefits and the challenges with whatever you're studying, if you could bring in some of that qualitative insight. So we talked to four different leaders really in depth over hour long conversations to understand, you know, how were they thinking about device refresh? Had that changed since the pandemic? What benefits were they expecting to see from perhaps an accelerated refresh? And so I think we got a really good mix of both quantitative and qualitative insights to inform the research. So I'm really excited to dive into some of those findings in just a minute. And Andrew, at a high level, can you tease out the top three findings, which we'll discuss in more detail throughout the course of our conversation here today? Absolutely. So three key things really stood out from the research. One is that organizations are taking a closer look at their device strategy in light of all the changes that we've had over the past couple of years, moving to hybrid work, you know, a proliferation of security threats. Um, you know, companies now see that PC as more strategic than ever. Um, and we also saw that when we looked at their priorities, you know, investing in new technologies to drive things like flexible work were some of their top priorities, right? So people are thinking about device st refresh strategies differently now than they were in the past. That's point number one. Point number two, is that the consequences of not updating that hardware and keeping it fresh are very high. Um, outdated devices, according to our surveys and our interviews, um, you know, cause a lot of issues with poor end user experience, you know, potentially expose the organization to security threats. Um, and the companies are increasingly seeing device refresh as a way to mitigate some of those issues. Um, you know, for example, 39% of the companies we interviewed as part of this survey, or we, uh, that we included as part of the survey, said that they experienced between one and 10 breaches. And accelerated refreshes are kind of intended to help improve that overall security posture. So number three is that an accelerated refresh can protect your organization's devices, enable employees, and bolster the bottom line. So we actually saw that all of the, you know, or a good majority of those that we surveyed as part of this research process saw a lot of benefits, not just in terms of IT management and security, 
but also driving higher business outcomes for their organization as well. So those are the top three takeaways from the report. Excellent. So Andrew, let's dive into a few of these themes in a bit more detail. First, you mentioned that an accelerated refresh cycle has a range of benefits. As a baseline, historically, what have we seen in terms of the standard refresh rate for most businesses? And with the emergence of hybrid work, how do we expect this to change in general and perhaps even for specific classes of, uh, of technology or devices? Historically, the best practice indicates, and I think most people follow this, is the common refresh cycle is three to four years. There are a lot of reasons for that, you know, different types of contracts that you might have with your manufacturer, with your service provider. Um, it typically, it just it, it, it is it is all revolved around that three to four year refresh cycle. But interestingly, this is something that really jumped out to me in the survey was that most organizations today indicate that they are using a two or three year refresh. Nearly 60% of those that we surveyed indicated they were in that two to three year um, refresh cadence. And it's about split, about 30-30 um, you know, per two and three year refresh cycle. So that was a really surprising thing. It, it appears that this change towards a more accelerated refresh has already started to begin. It's not something that's kind of in the future um, pie in the sky, but is really actively happening um, right now. So that's been a really interesting finding that we've been consistently seeing throughout the survey um, results. You know, we do see some organizations even going down to the level of a one-year replacement, um, a very small percentage of them, but there are still some organizations that can go down to that very accelerated refresh rate. Now, typically, we do tend to see differences between device form factors. For example, laptops tend to have a shorter refresh cycle than, say, desk um, desktops, which tend to be more in a three to four year range, according to the data. But interestingly, kind of what the best practice around device refresh is three to four years was something that was actually disproven through the research that we've done in this study. And Andrew, when thinking about most companies' top priorities, whether this is security or app performance or system reliability, how would a shortened cycle help to address these? Question. And it's a counterintuitive one because I think most people don't associate an accelerated refresh with aligning with those priorities. But what we saw very clearly from the survey and from the interviews was that it actually really does support those key company priorities. So when we asked respondents, you know, what benefits have they experienced or do they expect to experience by embracing accelerated refresh? There were five key benefits that they highlighted at the top. One was 72% said it was going to improve security. You know, having that increased refresh cadence gives you the newest technology to be able to protect your entire environment. That one's fairly clear. 69% said it would improve app performance. You have better compatibility, better responsiveness from a user experience. 69% said it would be higher system reliability. So you're going to be running into less things like blue screens of death, for example, um, application you know, crashes, driver issues, right? Any of those kind of system issues that end up impacting the user or the organization um, from a cost perspective. 64% even indicated that an increased refresh cycle would help them with innovation. You could see how this would be the case if there were new types of device features and capabilities that you wanted to bring into your environment very quickly so that employees could start using them. Maybe new collaboration technologies on the PC to support hybrid work, for example. And finally, 56% said faster deployment. Um, so while I'm still going to go through all of the you know, typical processes of, of deploying devices, if I'm doing this faster, um, I'm going to be getting those processes much more streamlined. I'm going to be relying on much more automation to do that deployment as well. And so what we find across the board is that the accelerated refresh really aligns with company priorities at a very high level from a security perspective, from a user experience perspective, as well as an IT operations perspective agility perspective as well. Andrew, zooming in specifically on employee experience, something which is increasingly important to almost every organization, what are employees missing out on by using dated hardware? Or perhaps put another way, how would their experience change with this type of an accelerated refresh cycle? So the computing experience is really the foundation of the digital employee experience. You can't get anything done for work if your hardware is not working 
right? Right. If it's slow, if it's not stable, if it's breaking down all the time, right? You're not going to be able to get anything done. And that's going to really impact your level of engagement at work, your uh, reputation in terms of how you think about your company and the services that they provide to you, right? So it has a very significant impact. And so if you're able to invest in more modern devices, get that refresh cycle faster than the typical cadence. Um, there are a few benefits that were highlighted as part of our survey respondents that really show some of the benefits from an employee experience perspective. Um, one uh, area, the top area, 49% said that outdated hardware was going to hinder productivity, right? You're going to have faster, uh, slower devices, excuse me, less reliable experience overall. 42% said unreliable performance. 42% said unoptimized app performance. Um, and a host of other impacts as well, ranging from decreased uh, team collaboration, poor network connectivity, shorter battery life, you know, poor audio video quality, right? All of these aspects of the digital employee experience are significantly impacted with an outdated hardware strategy and devices that just aren't fit for the modern business. Andrew, how about in terms of the bottom line? If you have any data to speak to how an accelerated refresh cycle would ultimately impact the health of the business itself. Absolutely. So 96% of our respondents said that an accelerated refresh is either valuable or critical in terms of its ROI impact, right? So there's a high expectation amongst the survey respondents that that is going to be the case, right? Um, but if you think about, you know, how does this overall impact the bottom line? You know, there is this perception of, oh, I'm, if I'm going to be refreshing, um, more frequently, isn't that going to cost me more money? Well, um, yes and no. I mean, in in one sense, you will be paying more frequently for devices, right? But you're also unlocking additional business benefits that ultimately are going to impact your bottom line. Think about, you know, someone with, um, you know, uh, that is a mobile salesperson, right? They need to have a device that's you frequently refresh, maybe they're using a touch screen, they're going out and interacting with customers. If they have a really poor computing experience and they're not able to make that sale because you're on a four or five year refresh cycle, that's going to impact your overall bottom line. So while you'll need to make that investment in that increased refresh cycle up front, it's going to pay dividends in terms of giving tools to the right people to do the job that they need to do to really accelerate your business. We also see a number of different benefits from a bottom line perspective in other areas related to accelerated refresh. It's not just kind of the productivity components of this, but security was another area that really um, stood out to us in the research. Um, typically, you would think, you know, um, you know, you would have that raised cost because of that hardware purchase every one to two years. But the data shows that 63% of respondents said their organizations reduced CapEx or OpEx on security and 58% reduced costs on compliance initiatives as a result of adopting an accelerated refresh. So while you may be you know, paying more upfront for the hardware, you're saving in terms of the software, um, security licenses and so forth that you're gonna be you know, having to use in order to deal with that outdated hardware. So security impacts are, are big here. Management is another major impact too in terms of being able to streamline your operations, more effectively patch devices, be able to deliver those devices and configure them in a much easier fashion than you would be on say an older device that's running in a four to five year refresh. So you're saving in terms of IT costs. So when you think about that bottom line, you need to think not necessarily just about that first upfront you know, hardware purchase. You need to think about this long-term. How does it impact security? How does it impact management? How does it impact that user experience over a longer time horizon? And that really helps to prove a lot of the business value of that accelerated refresh. Andrew, to your point, so certainly a host of benefits, whether it's from user experience to um, security posture to manageability to even unlocking more innovation from the organization. Um, why isn't this a no-brainer? What's, what's holding organizations back from instituting this type of a strategy? That's a great question and one that we really wanted to test in the research as well. And a lot of it's culture, I would say, mindset. It's being used to an older way of operating and sticking to that three, four, five-year refresh and not really seeing a, a reason to change. You know, a, a lot of that can be very difficult to actually go and change, but we really wanted to go in and test what would move the needle for customers that maybe were a little bit hesitant. Maybe they don't want to do a two to three-year refresh. They're good on the four to five. What would actually make them change? 
And we asked them specifically, what would enable you as an organization to adopt a two-year refresh cycle? And there were five uh, you know, key things that really stuck out to me from some of the responses. One was security features. So that was by far the, the top reason. If I can take advantage of these new security features, you know, that's really going to be a great reason for me to refresh quicker, right? Improved management capabilities. You know, you know, I'm able to go and manage these devices more effectively. Maybe I'm using the cloud to manage these devices, using more automation to manage these devices, collecting more telemetry data, right? You know, if I'm using the most modern up-to-date platforms, I'll have access to all of those new features and capabilities. Flexible cost structures um, were one as well. Um, you know, being able to, you know, scale up or scale down my cost of, of purchasing and being a little bit more flexible so that I don't necessarily need to buy all my devices in a two-year refresh, but maybe I buy a segment of them in two-year, a segment in three-year, and be able to be flexible in terms of that overall purchasing process. Um, fourth was new end user features. Um, it's actually statistically below the other three, but still pretty important um, as well. But new end user features are attractive, especially if organizations are embracing hybrid work, trying to improve collaboration, et cetera. You know, that can be a, a major attractor um, as well. Um, and what was one was interesting as well was that at the bottom of the list was utilizing more outsourced services. So that was, you know, I think it was um, you know, high 30 percentage or so of folks saying, you know, utilizing outsourced services would help me adopt this to your refresh. Um, you know, bringing in a partner can can really be helpful, but also, you know, really trying to align this internally as a business and make that choice around to your refresh is arguably, you know, kind of more important in terms of driving that overall value. Andrew, the study revealed a number of insights and certainly a number of key recommendations. How would you recommend organizations start to plot their own journey, start to think about what's first, what's next? How would they map this out? Sure, absolutely. So we outlined five key recommendations um, in our final research um, deliverable, um, which really talks about um, you know, how you can get started here. The first thing is to really start to think about the cost implications of an accelerated refresh. And what I try to do here is encourage folks that are thinking about this to not just think about the tangible benefits, but also think about the intangible benefits. What do we mean by that? Tangible benefits are things that are hard metrics, right? You saw some of the data earlier around, you know, I can increase um, or I can decrease my security spend with an accelerated refresh cycle, right? That's a very tangible benefit. I can be more efficient with my management. That's also a very tangible benefit. But we also need to bring in intangibles into the business case as well. Employee productivity, employee engagement, retention, things that take longer to prove out over a period of time are also really important to building that business case for an accelerated refresh. So you need both the tangible and the intangible. The second thing is to really start thinking about what is your current process around operating system upgrades? And can you link this accelerated refresh with that operating system upgrade? We know a lot of organizations are going and in, um, you know, in, investing in the newest operating systems from all the, the major operating system vendors, right? Can you link that together so that you can have a brand new piece of hardware running the latest operating system at once. That's where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck in terms of user experience, security enhancements, better manageability, things like that. Um, pursuing a mixed refresh strategy if necessary. I mentioned this earlier, but there may be cases where you want two-year refresh for some parts of the workforce and three for other parts of the workforce. Um, the concept of a refurbishment is becoming more and more popular as well as people say, um, I want to just not, I don't necessarily want to send back this device, but I want to refurbish it, give it to another person, use it for another use case um, so that it's part of my entire device refresh strategy as well. So having that mixed refresh strategy can also be helpful in taking on some of this two-year refresh benefit. Fourth, um, you know, linking accelerating refreshes with as-a-service models. Um, today, we know that the refresh model is very closely linked with things like PC as a service, right? Being able to play, pay a subscription fee for purchasing devices um, and being able to do that in an ongoing OPEX model as opposed to a traditional CAPEX model. Um, the as a service model works very nicely with a two-year refresh because the point of an as a service model is to give you a lot more flexibility in terms of 
device form factor, but also refresh cadence as well. And they're often more flexible in terms of the contracting to enable you to take advantage of some of these two-year refreshes more easily. And finally, considering how re refreshing devices can support your organization's long-term sustainability initiatives, right? Um, we know that most of the, um, the impact environmentally from device production happens at the initial production, not necessarily, you know, kind of the long-term um, running of those devices, right? And so how does that impact your overall sustainability goals? If you're able to, you know, have a accelerated refresh and you're able to refurbish things at the back end of that refresh, you could positively impact your sustainability goals as well. So we encourage, you know, folks that read this study to also think about what are those opportunities from a sustainability perspective as well? Andrew, fantastic insights. Thank you again for taking us through these here today. Any closing thoughts for our audience before we break? I would just say to the audience today, again, circling back on some of the ROI points, really consider the two-year refresh with a wide variety of benefits there, intangible benefits plus tangible benefits. Think about that impact on the employee experience longer, time, longer term, but also consider some of those short-term benefits that you can accrue um, as well. I'd also encourage you know, the audience to go and download the link to the full study so you can dive in and see all of the great data points and, and interview quotes and um, survey respondent data that we've collected. And it has a lot more detail in there that you can dive into. Andrew, thank you again. Thanks for having me.